Mr. Clark's back. Time to take a look at topic 14.1 as revolutions hit Europe. You may recall when we were looking at the French Revolution and the period of time after the French Revolution, they held what uh, was called the Congress of Vienna in Austria, led by, as you see in the picture above, Prince Clemens von Metternich of Austria. And what they did is they tried to establish a balance of power in the aftermath of Napoleon Bonaparte's dominance throughout Europe. So today we're going to see how the aftermath of Napoleon's reign throughout Europe impacted much of Europe. We'll look at some of the different goals of conservatives, liberals. Let's we'll see how nationalism helped to spark revolutions. We'll look at the results of revolutions in 1830 and 1848. Before we do so, we should just clarify what an ideology is. It's a system of thoughts and beliefs, as we fill out number one. Opposing ideologies would clash during the 1800s, which would lead to a series of revolutions. Two, what was the general feeling and mood of the representatives at the Congress of Vienna? Many reps believed in the ideology of conservatism. These were a lot of your monarchical leaders or representatives of the monarchies who wanted to restore more traditional ways of doing things. And so conservatism in many ways during this period of time in history represents uh, the monarchies throughout uh, Europe. What is conservatism? Three. And obviously there are some comparisons to modern day conservatism in the United States and around the world. It's a philosophy based on a desire to preserve more traditional ways of doing things. When you look at conservatism in the, I guess in terms of modern day society, conservatism does not want to, they kind of favor the status quo. They don't necessarily want you to have a lot of the more modern changes. So and sometimes conservatives get criticized as being, let's say, stuck in the 20th century. You know, conservative philosophies on a lot of different issues. Maybe they're not so strong on, let's say, the environment. They're not so strong in terms of protecting a woman's right to choose. They're uh, pro-life, opposed to pro-choice. Um, when you think about like gun control, you know, liberals are a little bit more in favor of gun control today where conservatives kind of have the 1700s mentality that every per person should have and uh, own a, and should own a gun. So there's a lot of different things there that you can see are more conservative. A lot of the support too for conservatives today and back then as we look at number four, come from uh, the aristocracy, the high and wealthy business owners, and during that specific period of time, the high clergy. So a lot of its support came from those who were most hurt by the new ideas, let's say of the French Revolution. Explain what Prince Metternich meant by the seed of revolution. Well, he meant that the idea for a change in revolution had already been planted by the French Revolution. So the French Revolution is the seed that's kind of planted in the ground and is going to spring out through all of Europe during this period of time of the 1800s. Revolutionary ideas, he warned, not only threaten Europe's monarchies, but also undermine the values of the old social order. Another issue too during this period of time were the enlightenment ideas which were spreading to other countries and people were seeking change. Six list three reasons why conservatives preferred the old order. Cite evidence to support your answer. Conservatives wanted to restore royal families to the thrones they had lost when Napoleon swept across Europe. They supported a social hierarchy in which lower classes represented and obeyed their social superiors. Conservatives felt that their own interest in peace and stability benefited everyone. So in their mind, their conservative ideas were beneficial for society. They believed that the talk about natural rights and the constitutional government could lead to only chaos, as it did in France during the French Revolution in 1789. Seven, what is liberalism? Liberalism can trace its roots back to the Enlightenment. A lot of the philosophers, which helped to establish the kind of liberal ideas, were based on the opposition to conservatism, the opposition to the old monarchies within society. It stressed individual freedoms, equality under law, freedom of thought and religion. Those who believe in this philosophy were less likely to sit back and accept a bad situation, but rather they would step up to fight to challenge it. Eight, some of the famous documents during this period of time in history in the 17 and 1800s are based on liberal ideals. 
uh, the French Declaration of the Rights of Man, the United States Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, a lot of these ideas coming out in the late 1700s, which would impact the 1800s, 1900s moving forward, come from kind of these liberal uh, philosophies. Of course, the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Rights of Man, as well as Declaration of Independence, are going to guarantee and protect a lot of these individual rights and freedoms. Actually, just fill out a little bit of information on the three different isms here, three different ideologies, liberalism, nationalism, conservatism. Liberalism support you often comes from the middle and lower class, included sometimes business owners, bankers, lawyers, newspaper editors, writers, those who really supported the rights and liberty, equality, and property. They wanted written comp constitutions with separation of powers, no one branch of government or one monarchy or one person should have too much power. Let me just clarify this here. Nationalism, nationalist groups who shared a common heritage, demanded their own states. These are people, nationalistic uprisings, where you're controlled by a larger empire or monarchy and you want your individual rights and freedoms. This is often true, like in your larger empires, let's say, as you move forward in history, looking, let's say, at the Ottoman Empire, which is a vast empire across North Africa and the Middle East. So a lot of these individual groups are going to want their freedom. Or later on, the Austro-Hungarian Empire we'll look at, which obviously controlled most of Eastern Europe. So we look at nationalism, nationalistic groups, they shared a common heritage, history, language, they wanted their own homeland, they wanted to create a sense of cultural identity. Conservatives included monarchs, landowners, church leaders, they supported monarchies and traditional social hierarchy. They favored stability and order and the suppression of revolutions. In many ways, uh, Prince Clemens von Metternich, as he spoke at the Congress of Vienna, he actually criticized nationalism and liberalism, saying they would actually help to fertilize the seed of revolution throughout Europe. Ten, explain why liberals support laissez-faire economics. They saw the free market as an opportunity for capitalistic entrepreneurs to succeed, and capitalists, capitalists and often employers, liberals had different goals from those working, laboring in the factories, mines, and other enterprises of the early uh, industrial revolution. 11. What motivated soldiers to fight during the French Revolution? To defend their homeland, nationalism. And when you think about nationalism, as you look at number 12, it's a deep love and devotion to one's own nation or national interest. That's the traditional form of nationalism. The nationalism that we mentioned previously is more so the idea that you should be independent and free from an outside power of control. So if you're going to be united together and with a nationalistic spirit, we'll look at some characteristics of this. If you let me look at 13, the characteristics of people from the same homeland, they might share language, common history, beliefs, traditions, culture, food, and music. Think about in the United States, let's say like uh, the 4th of July or Independence Day. We traditionally celebrate that with you know parades and fireworks, which are kind of our traditions. We have food like hamburgers, hot, dog, hot dogs, barbecues. We might play, play patriotic music. So those are some of the things that people from the same country might share in common. Fourteen, remember the revolts in Serbia, Greece, Spain, Portugal, and the Italian states. Similar, what ideals did the revolutionaries have in common? Revolts in Serbia and Greece were nationalistic in nature, successful in throwing off Ottoman rule, and I had referenced the Ottoman Empire previously. The revolts in Spain, Portugal, and the Italian states were similar because the rebels demanded constitutional governments. Also, these revolutions were suppressed by the armies of conservative European powers. Fifteen, what events proved that Metternich was correct in his fears that liberalism and nationalism might seed or spark revolutions? Well, the Serb and Greek wars were of independence. Uprisings in Spain and Portugal and various Italian states illustrated this as well. July 1830 revolt in Paris proved Metternich was correct and his fears that nationalism and liberalism could lead to revolutions and uprisings throughout Europe. Sixteen explained the causes that led to the French Revolution of 1830. 
Charles X had uh, taken over the throne. He suspended the legislature, began limiting rights to vote and restricted the press, all the things that the French had fought for during the French original French Revolution in 1789. And now they're seeing these being reined in by the new monarchy. He rejected the French charter or constitution that had created the legislature. In Paris, angry citizens began to revolt. Charles X abdicated the throne and he fled to England. And one of the reasons why he abdicated the throne, if you remember back to the original French Revolution, what happened to King Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette? Off with their heads, they were beheaded. So obviously, Charles X feeling the pressure kind of protecting himself by bailing out. 17, what led to yet another French Revolution in 1848, a deep recession, which was a period of economic decline in France. How can a recession, 18, negatively impact a country? We'll usually see businesses contract or shut down, factories shut down, poor harvest, food prices soar with inflation, high unemployment, and there was censorship throughout the country. after Charles X fled to England, radicals and liberals had different ideas about how to establish the new French government, explain the differences and how these differences impacted the revolution of 1848. French radicals wanted to set up a republic, whereas middle-class liberals wanted moderate political reforms. The group supported the establishment of the second French Republic. However, upper and middle-class liberals then gained control of the government and suppressed the 1848 revolt by workers. Resentments and class divisions would lead to future uprisings. Prince Clemens by Menardic was quoted as saying, when France sneezes, Europe catches a cold. If you think about that quote, what do you think that might mean? So when you look at that particular quote, he believed that French revolts inspired uprisings in other countries. After the Paris uprisings, Belgium and Poland rebelled along with Serbs. Greeks and other factions in Central Europe. So therefore, if France is doing something revolutionary, the fear would be, so might other countries kind of follow the French lead. Twenty-one. How are the February days and June days similar and different? Both uprisings included street fighting, but the February days ended with the proclamation of the Second Republic. The June days where workers were revolting against upper and middle class liberals who had gained control of the government and ended programs that helped the workers. The government crushed the rebellion, leading to deeper divisions between the different classes. The revolutions in 1830 and 1848 were the results of new ways of thinking and hard times for workers. Could one of these factors by itself have caused such widespread rebellion? Why or why not? Well, both factors combined to ignite widespread rebellion. During the February days in France, a recession and government suppression led to a rebellion. However, the June days saw the suppression of working class revolt by the upper middle class liberals. Revolution spread across Europe as workers demanded relief from uh, the miseries of the Industrial Revolution. And middle-class liberals wanted a greater share of political power as well as protections for the basic rights of all citizens, and fortunately just male citizens during this period of time in history. 23 lists two causes and effects of the 1848 revolutions in Europe. Okay, looking at 23. Revolution spread across Europe as workers demanded relief from the miseries of the Industrial Revolution. Defeats ended the age of liberal revolutions. In the decades ahead, liberalism, nationalism, and later on socialism would win successes, not through revolution, but through political activity. And lastly, the lesson reflection. Why were most of the rebellions in 1848 unsuccessful? Most of these rebellions were unsuccessful because European leaders took military action against uprisings and the revolutionaries did not have mass public support. In order to go through a revolution, you need to have the willingness to put your life on the line, be willing to sacrifice. 
And some of these people wanted changes, but weren't necessarily willing to kind of make the sacrifice needed in order to facilitate this change. Also opposing goals divided liberals who wanted moderate political reforms and workers who sought more rad radical economic changes. Take a moment or two to get down anything you need to. Remember, you could always pause along the way if need be. Hopefully you enjoyed our initial discussion here in the new chapter and the impact of the Congress of Vienna and some of the revolutions that kind of followed the aftermath of the original French Revolution. Until next time, Mr. Clark is...